Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I'm Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are very welcome. If you're a new subscriber, you can greatly benefit by using the playlists that have been made for just that purpose on the Master's Voice. The information is um, divided up by theme. So if you go to my dashboard to get to the dashboard, all you have to do is look below this video and where you see the channel name, the master's voice prophecy blog, click that, and it will take you to the dashboard. And on the dashboard, you're going to see home. You're going to see videos. You're going to see, I think it says playlists. I think it says channel. It even says community. So if you click on the videos, then you'll see my video dash scroll down just a little bit and you'll see playlists and the playlist, the most important playlist that you need to catch up with is the Russia and the China playlist. That playlist actually needs to be updated because there are quite a few videos made maybe over the last five to six months that haven't been added. But yes, the Russia and China playlist, it's not the first bunch of prophecies that I ever received, but it was the first group of prophecies that the Lord had me deal with once I came to video. So here the order of videos is different from how it is on the blog on the master's voice prophecy blog, where, um, the link for that is provided under every video on the blog. I think the first videos that I started with are the destruction of America, the judgment that is already upon America, a judgment that cannot be removed or turned back. The work I am doing here is a work of permanence. God has said that he will never forgive America's sin and that America's final judgment will be according to Revelation chapter 18, which those of you who read the word know that that is the, chan that is the chapter that deals with the final judgment of Mystery Babylon. So the identity of Mystery Babylon here on the Master's Voice, it is no longer a mystery. The Lord has been explaining who he says Mystery Babylon is ever since, I think, at least 2020. I was doing videos such as a brass forehead and the harlot on the back of the beast and things like that. And so the playlist will help you to catch up and ca catch up and deal with the information by theme. And there are alternate places to watch this content. You can look on Rumble, BitChute, Brighteon, those. Ch I have backup channels on all of those, especially dealing with the censorship here. May God continue to spread his grace and his mercy over this work. For as long as the Lord wants these words to be spoken, I will be here bringing out passionately the prophetic words of the Lord. And I think that I have entered into another arc because I have discovered at least four to five prophecies dealing with sexual morality and how God sees it. Things that were have never been put on the blog, things that have never been published. This one that I'm going to deal with here briefly is all the way from October the 5th, 2021. And the title of this message is Winning Back People from the Edge. And this prophecy was a dream that I had on October the 5th. Every message has a date and God gives every message a title. So on October the 5th, I had this dream and I remember sharing this dream on Facebook. And I also shared this dream on the master's voice channel here, but on the community page. So if you do not follow this blog, if you are not a subscriber, you're welcome to become a subscriber. There's no pressure. You can be a casual viewer if you so choose, or you can be one who subscribes to the blog. However, because of consistent monitoring or whatever YouTube wants to call it, many times people get unsubscribed. So if you are a subscriber and you're not getting notifications for a very long time, it might be that I haven't uploaded anything, or it might be that you have been unsubscribed. So what you can do, the best way to fix that is go to where, where you can subscribe, where you see the subscribe button. It might be just below the video, or you can find it on the dashboard. Click it once and then you'll be subscribed and then click it again until you see a little bell icon. And that means that when I publish, you'll get notifications, but there's no guarantee because YouTube is the boss here. And so if you don't get, you have to do the extra work of keeping up to date to see if there's any new material. And so building on the prophecy that I just finished in the heat of my spirit, 
with the Holy Spirit certainly pushing me on. That prophecy is called, What is a Woman? And in that message, I was describing a very brief dream that I had on March the 16th, 2023, in which I saw a very famous, uh, a well-known American personality was over in Africa, and he was having an increasingly frustrating conversation with an African woman who was suffering from uh, this confusion that here in the United States is called gender identity, where people are saying that a man can be a woman and a woman can be a man, and there's no difference between a man and a woman, which is just preposterous because in every possible area from height and girth and strength and and abilities, men and women are patently different. And that is because men and women do not grow on mango trees. Men and women are created by a creator who made them different, who made them at different times. The man was made first, and then the woman was made from his body. And the word of God even says that man was not made for the woman, but woman was made for man, which means that woman comes after man in God's order. But here in America, there's this ongoing and increasingly noisy increasingly disruptive, increasingly strident attempt to create a world in which not only are men and women equal, which is feminism gone drunk, but now we're supposed to believe that a man is a woman and a woman is a man and they're both the same. And this is evidence of madness creeping into a society. So it doesn't matter what the psychologists are calling it out there. This is evidence of spiritual madness coming upon a people. And I, Celestial, am here to let you know that that spiritual madness that is being evidenced by even the youth going totally astray, this is a sign of God's judgment upon this nation. And the word of the Lord is that it will increase because it is coming from a spiritual place. So the reason that America is doing this, the reason that America is in fact not content to do this alone, the reason she wants to spread it everywhere is because the madness has set in like a fever. It has absolutely taken hold. And now she does not want to be in the mud alone. America is attempting to tell all the nations of the world that the water, or should I say the mud in the mud pit, is fine and that everybody else should jump in and satan is very much in favor of this madness spreading to all the territories of the earth and this is why you now see that the united states is now taking this thing from it's not hurting anyone to equal rights to civil rights this was within her own borders and now she's attempting it to tuck it there somewhere in the un and say that it's actually human rights so that, that she can then have sort of an official banner to use as she goes around the different, the different nations of the world, trying to strong arm them to join her in what is basically being gay and crazy. So um, today's message was just a very short dream that God gave me, um, sort of, excuse me please, sort of looking behind the curtain at what is going on when people are departing from God's ideals, God's very obvious and easy to understand design. And this builds upon what I was sharing in the previous dream where I saw that this man was becoming frustrated with trying to get this African woman to simply confess. He was a man and she's a woman and he's saying, what am I? What am I? What am I standing in front of you? And what are you? And this woman began to exhibit self-harming behavior. That was the part that I never got to finish in that previous prophecy. She began to, to make as if she wants to saw herself in half, to cut herself in half. And I was so concerned that I, I jumped in, I intervened in the conversation between her and the man, even though it wasn't really a conversation. She was just standing there like a, 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 a pole, like a tree you know, frozen and becoming agitated. And then she began to exhibit self-harming behavior and this is evidence of the fact that we, we can see here in America that they consistently keep bringing out data that this group that departs from what you might call God's moral law, but this is just actually departing from original design. So departing from Eden, departing from what you are made. This group that does this 
tends to suffer from more mental imbalances than normal. So there's a steep spike in the community that is trans because they feel isolated, they feel lonely, and it's not just a case of, oh, society doesn't like me, I feel cut out. It, it needs to be understood in this community that I know that there are people who do attack and they're people that are strong, but the truth of the matter is, is that these feelings emanate from inside them. They happen apart from all external stimulus because when you begin to harm your body and attack your body, you are doing more than just a surgery. You are literally trying to invalidate your genetic code. You are trying to rebuild yourself and you have no capacity because even though God has graced us as human beings with limited ability to create, meaning that we can reproduce what we see, we can draw, we can paint, we can design, we can also um, create on a very visceral level, meaning that we can reproduce ourselves just like the animals can and just like the flowers can, just like the fish can, but we do not have the ability to create to the point where we reshape the narrative. America has a very poor, obvious, and cheap alternative to truth. This is subjective truth where you don't have to live in the reality of what is really real. You can just say that you are a pink unicorn and live in your own fake bubble buying all pink clothing and pasting a cardboard horn on your head. But then this goes from being, well, it's not harming anybody, if you were three years old and doing that, then of course you're not harming anybody. It's cute, but when you're 33, it's extremely problematic because then you are basically showing us that you either lack the skills to cope in the real reality or you are so filled with pride that you think you can create something alternate to what actually is and then say, this is, is part two. So this is real world. This is what is part one, but then I've made something that's pretty awesome too. This is, is part two. This is ism and, and I live here, but then it gets even more dangerous when you come out of your madness that you call reality and begin to insist that we traipse along in there with you and call you she, her, him, they, them using plurals for what is clearly one person standing there. And if you continue to use plurals when you're one, trust me, the devil will take you up on that invitation and send you multiple friends to occupy that empty house. And then you will really be they, them. It will be you and the spirits that come in to dwell with you like that poor man in the Gadarenes that I constantly use here as an example. Jesus is so jealous for the house of the human being that Jesus commanded those demons to come out of that man and come out they did. Jesus cleansed that house, but now in these final times, in the end times, people are throwing wide open the barn doors, saying that they are they and them. Whatever you throw out there, Satan is not slack. He will take you up on that invitation. And so this woman in the first dream that I've described was exhibiting, excuse me, please, self-harming behavior. And this has been borne out by so much of the research and the studies and things like that, that are being done, excuse me. And all of that is pointing to an inability to accept self and wanting to recreate the self. But as I look in my Bible, I see that since man was made, even though roles have ch shifted, between men and women, and you can now find men being bakers and women being firemen and things like that. The one thing that nobody successfully did throughout all of ancient history, and even now, it has not been successfully done. It has been attempted, but all we are getting are crying people who have botched their humanity, who have cut off what they claimed they did not need and now are weeping as their bodies are revenging back on them. Exactly as God was saying, exactly as I prophesied towards the end of 2022, that God says, if you cut this body, hurt this body, wound this body, this body will rise up 
and strike you, he said. And he said that in some cases, your body will strike you tragically until you are dead. You cannot create a separate reality. No one in history ever managed to stop being a man and become a woman. No one in history ever managed to stop being a woman and become a man. And no one will be able to do these things organically. In the final days, however it is done, you will still be male at cellular level no matter what technology Satan brings on this earth to try and turn you. Certain things God has drawn the line, no man can cross it. And that is not pun intended. No man, no woman can cross it. It will all be witchcraft, smoke, and mirrors to think that a man can be a woman and a woman can be a man. Yes, I have prophesied here that men will give birth in the final times and that women will father children. You don't want to believe it? That is your business. The Lord has shown me these things and put the word in my mouth, and I have been faithful to release it since 2022. I will link that video below. Um, I think it's called Dry Rivers, Dry Wombs. And that is quite an eye-opening prophecy, and you need to have resilience and absorbency to be able to go through all of it because it covers a gamut of subjects, things that have never been heard before. And the Lord says they will all happen. They will all be real. So it is not hatred to any community to speak these things. There has to be truth confessed. As long as there is um, this strong arm behavior, as long as there is this um, push and this requirement that people stay silent, as long as this, there is this attempt to redefine the truth and call it hate speech and things like that, what this country is trying to say is that there's only one right form of opinion and everyone needs to traipse along and live in that second false reality and sit down and shut up and be quiet so that the second false reality where man and woman are the same and where women can be men and men can be women and the moral, the moral foundation of society can be eroded and thrown in the trash that second reality grows simply by reason of the tipping point. The more people keep saying, well, you know, I don't want to hurt anybody and I don't want to judge anybody. And this is the hypocrisy of the society that we have today. People don't want to be troubled by seeing a trans man on their beer, but at the same time, they don't want to be called a bigot. And so they're happy to say that, no, you can be trans, just don't be trans on my beer. And this is hypocrisy because you're not standing up for any one viewpoint. You're not standing up for any one thing. You're simply trying to say, I want to be left alone in my own bubble with my beer. And I don't want another man coming and being directly in my face on the can. So you're able to admit that a man is actually a man and you don't care to see a male on the beer can, but you are not willing to carry the conversation to its logical end and say, hmm, what will life be like in a few years if we win the beer war, but then we lose on every other point until this community has managed to leverage all points of power. And the next time they want to be on the beer, they will be, and it doesn't matter about me and my little boycott. These are the questions that people don't address at the root. They simply snip at one or two branches and then they, they feel like they've won something. Meanwhile, God is looking from an eternal perspective and he knows because of the inherent selfishness of people in this country. Don't bother me as long as you don't cross into my space. I don't care what you do out there. This is how this nation got here. And this is what I said in the last video. These videos, if you watch them in order, they tend to build up because the Holy Spirit is consistent. He lays a track and a foundation for where he's going. And so this video, this dream is called Winning Back People from the Edge, and it's very short. Um, God was showing me uh, some of the curious facets about sexuality and sexual morality, how easily it is lost if there is no foundational input from parents from society, if there is no discipline and correction, which many people shy away from, they, they fear to hurt their child's tender feelings, forgetting that children are quite resilient. Children are like little vines growing up and they need a stick for you to twine them around 
so that they grow up straight and tall and so that their little fruit that they're bringing out in the world doesn't drag along the ground. Even people who are growing tomatoes know this. They plant their prize winning tomato vines. And then when they start to see that there's progress coming along with the vine, they put up sticks and they carefully wrap their vines around those sticks so that the vines have some kind of blueprint in order for how to grow. Yet a child is infinitely more precious than a tomato plant. But the people bringing children into the world today are bringing them into the world with no idea how to raise up good, sound, righteous children in the knowledge and the love of God, knowledge of God, teaching your child about God, love of God, fostering in your child, showing them the carefully laid out path for them to gain the tools and the understanding to build a separate relationship with Jesus Christ on their own that has nothing to do with you. It happens under your roof, under your banner, yes, but you are teaching that child how to seek and love God for themselves. Because people neglect this, they would rather invest a lot more effort into their hobbies, their time, their jobs. And so the TV and Satan is raising their children, and that has an impact on the child's sexual morality. It has an impact on the child's overall morality. It has an, imp an impact on the very fabric of who that young person turns out to be. I dreamt October the 5th, 2021, that I had a gay neighbor. I don't actually have a gay neighbor, but I dreamt in this dream that I had a very flamboyant, gay neighbor, a flamboyant and outgoing man with a very active social life. And one day as we passed in front of the building, he was walking past me and then he suddenly spun around and then he said, madam, a word. And so I paused and he told me that he respects freedom of speech and all that, but he's tired of hearing me say certain things through the shared wall of the apartment. And I gazed back at him and I told him, well, those things will come through that wall forever, so you better move or change. And he was very shocked at my answer and he spun around and he walked away. And then later on, I came down, um, I came down in the building to the common room. Now where I live, we don't actually have a common room, you just have your home and, and the front door and downstairs and that's it. But in this dream, there was a common room and I came down to the common room and I found this man watching a very explicit, very explicit male to male porn film. And I, first of all, I was shocked to see that he had that kind of material on an open display. But then second of all, this man was so engrossed in the movie that he didn't notice that I walked in there. And when I walked in and I gazed around, there were quite a few other guys in the room, some of them playing pool, some of them reading magazines. But slowly as that movie kept playing, these men were casting glances at the screen until quite a few of them started watching it. And I was so angry when I saw the straight men becoming fascinated and peeping at that, that I walked up and I ripped the DVD out of the DVD player and I held it up to the gay man and I said to him, never again, never again will you watch this mess and neither will any of you. Do you hear me? And the straight men snapped out of it immediately. They were embarrassed at being caught. They were ashamed at being caught, having even looking at that material. But what the gay man said was, yes, mother. And he rolled his eyes at me and pretended to be offended, or he rolled his eyes at me and was offended. But I will stop it here and explain something because I know that there is a camp that is already getting the bullhorn out because there's this there's so many false beliefs in this country, but one of the more popular ones is that, uh, and you see it published in the media all the time by the supposed people who apparently know the souls of everyone. You see stories and articles coming out like, we're all a little gay, which is a hot burning lie from the pit of hell. That is their curse. Be aware of the things that you read and watch and listen to, and they just go into your mind because they've come from a celebrity's mouth, they've come from a president's mouth, they've come from some social influencer's mouth or whoever, or they've come from your family member's mouth or someone that you look up to, maybe a mentor. 
So it's come from the mouth that seems to know something. And then let me not leave out the false prophets' mouths. How could I leave out that contingent of fools? Be careful what goes into your soul. Because information comes out and before you know it, quick as anything, your brain has snatched that tidbit and filed it away as truth or fact. A lot of things become fused into the character, the soul area, the persona that you pick up like a magpie or a pack rat and you, you are not conscious that you've picked it up. They put these article out there as word curses. These are word curses. You read something that says we're all a little gay and then it's two and a half New York Post or New York Times or, or Washington Post or whatever, Times Magazine, pages of nothing but gristle, lies, conjecture, dirt, and pseudoscience. But you read this and then a tiny part of your brain begins to go, hmm, I wonder if that's why I like pink. This is how it starts. This is how corruption comes. The Bible says that a little leaven leavens the whole lump. So this is something to keep in mind. Sexuality is compelling. Human sexuality is compelling. All sexuality. This is why people are fascinated with videos of animals copulating in the wild. It has nothing to do with people, but they will still watch it and make ribald comments underneath the video and things like that. Sexuality is compelling, not because it is a sin. It is designed that way by God. It is for a purpose. It is not for everyone. It was never supposed to be splashed and integrated into movies and then perverted and then having men with men and women with women or men with children or all the other snuff things that they have on the dark web that God has taught me about and I have faithfully shared here on this channel. Sexuality is powerful. It was designed by a powerful God. It was designed to give certain results to those who practice it. And that is why God designed a carrier for it. Marriage. Marriage is the only furnace or the only hearth that can contain the fire of human sexuality. And so no matter what form is, it is, illegal or legal, illicit or sanctioned by God, when you put that before the eyes of people, they will automatically look at it. This is why porn is so powerful. This is why porn is such a problem around the world. This is why porn has toppled pastors and Satan is laughing because even pastors cannot manage to keep their eye gates pure and clean from the compelling nature of human sexuality. And so this man walks into a common space and then begins to put male on male sex there. And after a while, those sounds and that action, even straight men began to peep and look and have curiosity. And once you set your eyes on that thing, that's one of the sins that destroys and topples mankind, the lust of the eyes. You may have no desire for it in your heart, but as King David stood on the roof and started gazing at somebody's naked wife, where did it end up? With the death of a man and then the death of David's child. That's where one look took him. A baby died and he killed a good friend to cover up his sin and stole somebody else's wife. That's where the slippery slope takes people who can't control their eyes and their impulses and staple themselves to the Holy Spirit and act like little Joseph who ran away from human sexuality when it was offered to him on a platter by a married woman. That is where having no restraint leads people. When you put sin in front of people, they will look and participate because sin is sticky like tar. It is sticky like hot asphalt that's just been poured. That is why these straight men looked. They didn't look because of the lies of America that says that we're all a little gay. The people writing those articles are the ones who are a little gay and are just trying to have company for their misery. Sex attracts. That's why we use it in society to sell everything. And that's why these men looked. Not because they were gay, 
but because God's design is compelling. And even when you pervert it, it still has a type of perverted, compelling pull. But the second most important part of this dream is the response of the man who was in that lifestyle. When I rebuked him and I took away that DVD and I yelled at all of them in the room, the straight man was chastised, but this gay man attempted to act as if he didn't care. But what God let me feel is this man's emotions. And this man was close to tears. He was close to tears because in his life, no one had ever intervened to tell him what to do or what not to do. God let me feel the pain in this man that no one had ever bothered to give him a single righteous instruction in his life. That means from childhood out of his mother's mouth never came any godly instructions. Out of his father's words, he never found a single fence to build a boundary of protection around him. Nobody ever told him, that's wrong. Don't do that. And when he began to slide into the gay life, no one ever told him, dude, you can't do this. This isn't right. Instead, they told him, we love you no matter what. We're with you and we support your decision. The usual chorus of nonsense that people do when they want to participate in ally culture, when they want to seem more righteous than God. Because in America, God, his second name is the loving God, but then people want to be higher than the loving God and they want to love more than him. They want to love so much that we've decided here, we minus me, that let's love what God says he doesn't love. Let's go beyond God. Let's be God 2.0 and just love everything even if the Bible says that God does not love it. This does not protect people when they're heading down the path to hell. And so this man, the Lord let me feel how shocked and grateful he was that it took a total stranger to rip out his DVD, to yell at everybody, but especially him, and to finally tell him no. What this man felt from me was not what people always accuse me of, which is hate and judgmentalness and whatever other words they're using in any particular week, what he felt was love. Because love does warn, love does not support you in the sin and validate when you are getting off the narrow road and clicking your little indicator into the broad highway where you will smash into the wall called eternal hellfire. This man felt that somebody loved him enough to tell him what was not good for him. And that was something that he never had before. And so to bring this video to a close, to all of you who are hearing this message that has a friend or a child or a family member or a loved one caught in this life, now that you have heard that human sexuality is spiritual and powerful, now that you have heard why porn is such a massive industry and why it puts a hook in the mouth of man, woman, and child. Understand this, homosexuality is not anyone's first and natural choice. It is an aberration that takes place in the spiritual realm first. And America is too invested in taking as many souls to hell with her, to tell her the truth. America, unfortunately, is also too full of very proud people. And this goes across Europe and anywhere else that this lifestyle is validated and widely accepted and promoted and seen as a good thing. Nations that practice this, nations that have, excuse me, please. Nations that have thrown open the door to this are doing this on some kind of false or fake morality, this holier than thou that they actually accuse the Christians of having. They don't understand what happens in the spiritual realm, that homosexuality is monitored by very powerful seducing spirits that are capable of snatching even straight men and women from the righteous path, their natural bent, and leading them into this life. 
The demons that manage homosexuality are extremely covetous. To be covetous, it means that you have to be alive, you have to be sentient, you have to be capable of thought, planning, strategy, and you have to have an eye to see what it is that you covet. These demons desire to bring God's design into total corruption. And every time people willingly dive into this life, they don't know that they are colluding with spirits much more powerful than themselves, demons that will not let them go easily. There are many people that are in this life and think that they're having the time of their life. God was speaking to me about something called old gays, people who have been gay for 50 years. And you might think it's not possible to bring such people out of, the, out of this life. That may or may not be true. But the truth is that I've spoken about sin, repetitive sin, I speak about, excuse me, please. <clears throat> I won't stop this video, no matter what is going on here. Um, repetitive sin is where you keep sinning and sinning and sinning until it kind of wears a groove like a record. Now, when the record is new, there's no mark on it. But when you continue to walk the same path of sin, 5, 10, 15 years, whether it's smoking, whether it's drinking, whether it's any other destructive behavior, masturbation, fornication, having affairs, five affairs, 10 affairs, you can't stop. It's not even about the sex for you. You get high off the power. You get high off the secrecy. You get high off the, the conquest of every new boyfriend that your husband doesn't know about, every new woman that you take to a new hotel, trying to make it like that first affair you had on your wedding night. It wears a groove in the record of your life. And when that groove is very deep, it becomes very hard to deliver that person. That person is in the state of the man in the Gadarenes who had the legion of demons inside him. That person might be a very high level CEO with absolutely no trace of demonic possession whatsoever until someone with the requisite anointing and someone with the power of God in them enters into the process of deliverance with that person. And that's when you will see them manifesting great rage, great pride. Why? Because you are coming to challenge a whole family of demons that have been living in that house for 50 years. If this person is what God calls an old gay, those spirits will not give up that territory easily. Those of you who are honest, those of you who have struggled with these desires for a period of time, whether from the time you were very young or you went and experimented with it in college and then you came out of it, but the taste of it is still in your mouth. You may be married, you may have children, but you still think back and you still wonder about that. You may be a Christian struggling with these things. Sin leaves residue. You will need to seriously interface with the Holy Spirit on your knees to God about the hook of human sexuality misused because I'm not a fisher. I don't go out to fish for fish. I fish for people. I fish for souls. But I do know that once that hook pierces the jaw of a fish, sometimes the entire jaw has to get torn away to get that fish free. There's some sin that you're going to put your hand into because you are stubborn and you think that I'm sitting here because I have nothing better to do but talk, talk, talk. So you come and you hear the videos and then you go away and it's just like water off a duck's back. And there's stuff that some people are going to touch in the future or have touched already and that hook is going to get in and God loves you but it's going to cost you your jaw. If you are trans and you have cut something off your body, you have already had the hook pull a piece off and you cannot get it back. And that's part of what makes it hard for people to repent. It's very hard to dial it back after making all the loud noise and 22 videos about my journey, day 57. You've done all that You've alienated your family. You've cursed everybody and told them that if they don't support you, then they hate you and they're a bigot and they don't understand you. And they just, they just, they're just against your joy. So you bullied them and shouted at them until they kept quiet. 
And now that you've done it, the hurt is still there, except that it's deeper because now you have physical pain in your body. And now your heart hurts because you realize that breasts actually are pretty and that you need them for the future. Or now you realize that you can't be a dad because the thing that makes babies, you lost through pride. Sometimes it's hard to repent because your own actions have destroyed the road to repentance. But I'm here to tell you that Jesus Christ doesn't need a road. He is the bridge back to God. You can come back to God with whatever is left. It might hurt but God is in the business of soul repair. And the good thing is that you did not cut out your soul yet. You only cut it out if you refuse to repent, if you refuse to stop, if you refuse to come away from the fences. That is when you do the surgery that takes people to hell. The outer thing God will fix at the end of all things. It may be difficult to live with that mistake. It may be difficult to live with the memories of 40 years in the trans, the transvestite, the transsexual, the transgender, the gay, the lesbian, lesbian, the whatever life. Nobody hates you except the devil who made you hate you. So you now have to decide I'm past talking about all your affirmation friends, and I'm past talking about how you feel if you go back to the community and tell them, you don't owe the community anything. As we say here in America, they don't pay your bills. And if they do, then you can simply go and live somewhere else. With friends like that, you don't need enemies. The decision is whether you cut the outside, are you willing to come back to Jesus Christ? and ask for forgiveness and mercy so that he can heal what you did not cut, which is your soul. And to the family members who sit there, the ones who want five minutes of fame and the ones who want five minutes of being uh, the, the supportive mom and dad, you are a joke of a parent and shame on you. And this is not an opinion. This is objective fact. You have failed every single litmus test in the book of Proverbs for how to raise children and keep them safe and commend them to the Lord so that when they are old, they will not depart from his ways. You have utterly failed and you need to repent. You need to have absolutely no pride or no excuses if you know that you played a part in where your son or your daughter is right now. You need to repent. And if you did not play a part, if they went against parental instruction, if they railed against sound teaching and they carried their itching ears and the Pied Piper, Satan, the dragon, the chief transgender, for he is the spirit of all perversion in the earth, if they took their ears and he cut them off in his wickedness, then you need to become the weeping and the wailing woman of the Bible, the weeping and the wailing man. You need to truly lift up your voice at this hour for these young people. You need to truly cry out to God for a nation where the children are kissing each other in the street kind to kind. I'm speaking to the children first if you are of age and of understanding. You need to stop. America will not stand with you. Obama will not stand with you. Congress will not stand with you. Your allies and the pride flag will not stand with you when you die and you stand before God. It will be an audience of one. And he will ask you why you made the choices you made. You will not be facing me. You will not be facing the comment section where you have all the things to say. YouTube will not be there for you to have your moment. You will be dead in a body that cannot be destroyed, standing before your father. And he will be asking you, my child, why have you done these things? Trust me.
It will be a different conversation on that day. Don't be on the wrong end of the conversation on that day. And so it is time for us to be very focused on winning back souls from the ed edge. When I'm speaking here of covetous demons, these are not demons that you can just say, oh God, please help Melanie. She's, she's left home. Please don't do that. Be serious. The Bible says that this kind cometh not out except by prayer and fasting. That means that Melanie is not coming home until you burn the midnight oil and put those knees on the floor and cry out to God for her soul and give up some meals, you and your husband and her younger brother calling on Jesus to intervene and have mercy. We've become so complacent in prayer and we think a few muttered words and some bright hope is what will cut it. The devil is here to put points on the board. The kingdom suffereth violence. violence. So the violent need to activate violent mode and begin to use their spiritual weapons that are not carnal, but are mighty through God to the pulling down of every stronghold, including this one. Or these children are not coming home. Prevailing prayer is where it's at to fight this type of spirit. Courage to have the conversations necessary. And if the conversations don't move well, you don't need to do, oh me, oh my. You move directly to the prayer closet and you begin to fight this battle on your knees. Some of you, you fought the battle, you lost, you gave up, and now they've been in California for what, six months? Two years? It doesn't end there. The Bible says, ask for everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who seeks, finds. Everyone who knocks, the door will be open to you. If the woman knocked and knocked and knocked until the unjust judge, who was not a fair man, gave her the answer she was seeking, what is your excuse? I knocked and knocked and knocked and God didn't answer, so I gave up. Not quite how it works. The Bible says, pray without ceasing. That means be on their name until something begins to come up out of the ground. God expects us to hold the righteous standard, no matter who it is. He expects us to be the ones to practice reckless love for once by chasing after these people and telling them the truth. No, don't do this. Don't have the surgery. Don't cut your body. Don't take the pills. This is not who you really are. It is confusion. It's wrong. Don't do it. I love you, but I have to tell you the truth. Be the one who will take the DVD away from them and tell them, never watch this again. The will of God is sovereign. You cannot love somebody more than God. When you talk to people and you leave out the will of God, you are basically making them think. You are conditioning them to think that every action they take is okay as long as I receive love for it. Do you know that people are trained on this love bombing business? You can train someone to only want validation for their actions. This means whether the action is good or bad, moral, immoral, has a life-giving end or an end that will put them in the hospital, put them in six months of hospice care, and then eventually a funeral. You can train people by being a coward and by not speaking out or by being silent when you should speak. People can get trained, especially young people, especially small children. It is possible to train them wrongly into thinking that all their actions must meet a loving response. That is also a lie from the pits of hell. And many of you with that parenting style, you need to repent because you are the willing architects of what your children are today. You need to repent and confess that you didn't have a clue what you were doing and you built something that you now regret. So 
God has a righteous standard and God is able to keep his standard even though he loves us because God is a parent who does things the proper way. So God is not confused by what love is. God is able to love us and he is also able to maintain a standard in the home. If you want to live in heaven with God, where God's home is, heaven has standards. And while we are not yet there, God has made the standards available to us in his word. You read the word and you learn what the father's standards are when you keep them and you don't keep them with a grumbling spirit. He's forcing me not to have sex before marriage. He's forcing me to stay married to this one man. But you keep them with love and joy. He's telling me not to have sex with everybody out there because my body is sacred and God lives in my body and God doesn't want to have a bunch of roommates popping in and out where he lives. A man who understands that is a righteous son of God. A woman who accepts that is a righteous maid of God. When you understand the mind of God, you come to love the standard of God and you come to see that all God's standards are actually how God loves. God is not this lie that America has taught. Fake love, love of no consequence, love of no morality, just loving everything. God's love is actually the standards that he gives us to live by. Because when you keep them, you are bright, radiant, full of joy, even in hardships. The standards express the great love that God is wrongly famous for. So, we have responsibility not to abdicate speech. The beast system will kill speech, but while you can still speak, speak. You never know whose harm you may avert. And so I will stop it here. It is time for weeping mothers and fathers, for best friends, cousins, concerned coworkers, to do more than stay silent and to do more than weep. We must pray for people fervently and effectively, James 5 and 16. And then after we have plowed up the ground privately with prayer, then we seek God's guidance on how to approach them and say something. So in the kingdom of God, we also have that saying, if you see something, say something. God bless you. Repent. God is still taking applications. Until I see you again. Goodbye.